Hello, we're at Scott Newcastle in Kent, which eight accomplished artists are about to paint or draw. And our three judges will start using posh art words like impasto and sumato and en plein air. You like that one? That's my favourite. I'm dreaming they might say grisai. Anyway, don't worry, we'll be here to translate. Welcome to a brand new series of Sky Arts Landscape Artist of the Year. Over the coming weeks, we're challenging a fresh batch of artists to paint some of the National Trust's most beautiful views. You're looking at what I would call in terms of landscape painting, the full English. They'll be putting brushes, spray paint and collage to canvas in order to impress the judges. Award-winning artist Taishan Schierenberg, art historian Kate Bryan and independent curator Kathleen Soriano. It's like ice cream in the background. It's almost like a <laughs> raspberry ripple up here. But it won't be in vain, as one will win a possible life-changing prize. A £10,000 commission to paint the impressive Petworth House, made famous by Turner. And their painting will become part of the National Trust's permanent collection. What a gift it is. But they're not the only ones vying for the judges' attention. 50 more artists will come to each heat to try their luck as a wild card. You're blowing my mind. This is too <laughs> exciting. So who of today's first eight artists will win a place in the semi-final? You're having such a good time, though. I could That's see what you. the point of it is, though, isn't it? Have a good time. The tranquil tradition of landscape painting is about to get messy. You've got your J-cloth already. <laughs> <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci is always well known for his J-cloth. <laughs> Of today's eight new artists, six are professional. Kathy Reed, Meng Ju Shi, Mark Stopforth, Stuart Peckett, Howard Weaver, and Richard Knight. This is going to be a big challenge for me because it's quite a chocolate boxy location. I prefer things with a bit more grit in them, and there's so much green. And joining them are two amateur artists, Cecilia Wood, and Carl Olga. I'm um, actually feeling quite uh, confident, just a little bit apprehensive with what was going to happen with the, uh, with the weather, but, um, but I'm keen that it'll be OK, yeah. Until this point, the artist's submission pieces have been assessed using a digital image, so seeing the real thing can be eye-opening. That is the smoothest water I've ever seen. That's what initially attracted me to the piece, was that yeah. it's an amazing evocation of water, but then it has more than that. It's got a great sort of morning light. Is it morning? It feels like early morning yeah, light. Yeah, it's like glowing. I feel like you were immediately transported in, and I like the viewpoint that you're potentially sat on the rock or you're in the water. You're immediately straight into the scene. What's interesting about this one, we're used to people drawing, especially architecture, with black lines. Yeah. And I've never seen somebody use it in the reverse, where the white line is being used, and it works very well. But great use of perspective and the mm. different planes. So, again, a lot for the eye to do. Yeah. And you think that you've seen everything you've got to see, and then suddenly you notice something else, like the reflections on the right-hand side. Also, when you go to certain parts of London, for example, I like the way you get sort of quite nice houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm dwarfed by yeah. these amazing um, skyscrapers. I think this appealed to us originally because of there's a, a sort of a looseness to it. And it's quite monumental in scale, but you don't really realise that until you recognise the figure in the bottom left-hand mm. corner. And even though it's sort of slightly mad and and loose, it, it's quite contemplative at the same time. It feels as if some parts have been observed to understand the light and the mm. colour, and then there are other parts which have just come completely from their imagination, which is exciting when you get a day like today where we're giving them quite a defined, mm. Mm. extraordinary view, but what we're really looking for is them to personally respond to it.
I like the sense of them really looking. I don't feel like this is from a photograph. I feel like it is mm. from life because you get these really nice little just patches where the paintbrush is kind of creating mm. a shorthand for what they're seeing. Yeah. And I really hope that they can come today and do something which is as sort of strange and mm. sweet and colourful and, mm. and odd. It's actually quite a monumental yeah, yeah. area that they're covering and somehow they've managed to bring it down to this quite small piece of board. And I love the little man at the front, sort of yeah. with his clipboard. Where? You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's Bob, yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's his truck. What's great about this wall today is I really, really want to see the next yeah. thing that these yeah. people yeah. do. There are two castles here at Scotney. The new castle stands at the top of the hill overlooking a vista of the Kent countryside, and the old castle nestles within the grounds. It's this building and its moat that our artists are being challenged to paint. I can see so many different ways of doing this, and I can see there are layers upon layers upon layers of buildings and greenery. I'm actually really pleased. Um, I thought there were going to be loads more things in the way, and um, this way, and just face on, fantastic. I think I'm going to have a. I'm quite liking the, the idea of playing around with the shadows and the reflections. Amateur artist Carl Olga teaches art at a secondary school in Gibraltar. His submission of the Upper Old Town is painted on a discarded piece of metal he found at a bus stop. Instead of a canvas or a uh, normal piece of wood, um, I've brought a sheet of black metal steel on actual um, plywood. This is something that has always caught my attention, you know, uh, erosion and rust. And um, I thought, why not, you know, let's transpose that into a, an actual piece um, and create an artwork on a man-made um, object that's already eroded. I'm itching to get started now. I think it's time to start. <laughs> Artists, I hope you've got everything you need, that you're at the ready, you've got your talent, your confidence, you're bursting to go, your challenge is about to begin. You have four hours to complete your work. Good luck and your time starts now. One of the first decisions a landscape artist has to make is about composition. Whether they're taking photographs or painting straight onto the canvas, there are various techniques that can help. I can't resist climbing up here to ask what on earth you're doing, because it's, it's green out there and your canvas is here, this is your notebook, and you've got a roller. Please explain it all. Uh, well, first of all, I look at the tone of the painting. Usually I would start with a sketch, and this is my way of sketching, so I'm feeling it by drawing it. You're having such a good time, though. I could oh, see That's what the point of it is, though, isn't it? Have a good time. I quite like to put that on a wall. I'll stop now. Richard Knight is a professional artist from Surrey. A successful graphic designer, Richard switched to become a full-time artist 10 years ago. Preferring to paint cityscapes, Richard's submitted entry is a view of London from the top of Primrose Hill. I was worried about the chocolate boxy look. Do you feel good about it, though? Green is not my friend. Oh, is it not? No, no, I don't like green. It can overpower a painting, but this building is exciting. I like it. it I like is, the structure of it. It is extraordinary, it. isn't it? But I just can't wait to see what happens on the, yes, on the canvas. Yes, me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You started with that drawing to work out the composition. I see you've transferred it very basically with a couple of lines. Yeah. Um, it is a uh, symphony of grey and green. It looks like it's all grey, but you've got three brushes with grey. So you've obviously, <laughs> there are subtleties in the grey. There are, yeah, there are three different mm. tones of grey at the moment. OK. Professional artist Howard Weaver lives in Wales. A scenic artist for over 40 years, he has worked on a number of blockbuster films, from Finding Neverland to The Borrowers. His submission is of the Shebes Koros River, where it crosses the border between Hungary and Romania. You do speak scenic yeah. backdrops. Is this practically what you would call a, a miniature painting? If you're used to... It is a bit you, like... A, yeah, can it is. You, you're doing metres and metres and metres? Very big. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the kind of perspective you use in that kind of scenic 
painting useful here today? Do the same rules apply, but you adjust yeah. them? Yeah, when you're trying to create distance in scenic work, you're, you're trying to pretend that something's yeah. much further away than it really is. You know, uh, the painting's only 10 metres from a camera, but it's supposed to look like, uh, you okay. know, 50 miles. Yeah. Well, um, we'll let you <laughs> progress and we look forward we'll to seeing... We'll leave you to your symphony of greens and grey. Yeah, that, yeah, that was nice. Yeah. To produce a painting within the four-hour time limit, many of our artists have adapted their style. But that's not always the case. Mark, I don't meet many artists who are influenced by uh, the car manufacturer Henry Ford. But he invented, I think, mass production. <laughs> and uh, that's you've, where you're going. you've already nearly finished one. <laughs> I mean, I only turned my back for a second. And you've got a sheet here ready for the yep. next one. It's there, ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. How many do you imagine you might get through during today's challenge? Four or five. Mark Stopforth is an art teacher from Gloucester. Originally an installation artist, he switched careers because creating the installations took too long. He caught the judge's eye with his diptych, which was created from a memory of Dartmoor. You are going to try and inject that sort of windswept energy that yeah. you like into what is almost a cornea piece of English oh, countryside you could get. I'll be honest, there's lots going on that I'm really excited about. I'm excited about this wall here with the green ivy on it. So that's going to be my focal point, which then leads on to the trees. Sky is a given and then water at the front. So there's three elements there which I can really get stuck into. You've got your jay yeah. cloth. Already, <laughs> they're ready. Is that a key part That's of it? Yeah, Leonardo da Vinci is always well known for his jaycats. <laughs> We've got the beautiful location and our eight contenders, but landscape artist of the year would not be the same without the wild cards. Today, 50 more artists have come to Scotney on a first come, first serve basis to try to impress the judges. If they succeed, one of them could win a place in the semi final. Beautiful, sun shining. Even be good when the sun's not shining, <laughs> even if it's raining. It's great, isn't it? Oh, I like that. What's that? You're doing that with a sponge? This is just a glove, it gives you a bit of a glove. Yeah, it's like a steely top I use. It's very, that. very effective. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You are completely on your own. I started over there and then. <laughs> Couldn't quite find my pitch, so I thought, oh, let's just see what's around here. So I had a look, and I just thought, look at that. What a wonderful view. Hello. So you've got a great position as well. Yeah. What's going to be the toughest bit for you? None of it. None of it? Oh, just good. Love it. I'll come back, come back love later. It. I set up at half three, and I was still late, so. Um, I'm really excited. I am nervous, but it's just the experience of everyone here painting, and it's just magical, isn't it? It's just lovely. I'm really pleased to be here. Painting for a definite place in the semi-final, our eight heat artists are nearly one hour into their challenge. I have to be bold. I hate being bold, but at the same time, you've got to be. Otherwise, it, it doesn't have any energy, and I love having energy in my painting. That's stage one done. <laughs> Hopefully, so you're very systematic. I'm really expressive in my marks and stuff, but I'm a bit regimental right. in the process. I well, think. you need to be, don't you, with only four hours. For me, it's a whole learning curve because I haven't done. I don't do buildings. I don't do sunshine. So there's all these things that I'm having to rethink about for the paint and what paint can do.
Here at Scotney Castle in Kent, our eight heat artists have been applying paint and pencil onto their canvases for just over an hour. But under one artist's work lies something unexpected. So there's a mirror underneath all this. Can you tell me the theory behind the mirror? There must be one. The theory was, is I wanted to try and capture some of the moving light within the day. So by scratching back here, and when you look yeah. at it from different angles, you're going to get this sort of glint in. And I'm using sandpaper to kind of um, take some of the top layer off to get some of these more subtle um, textures underneath. Now, yeah. is this just some crazy weird old gimmick? <laughs> is it? OK, <laughs> it is, well, yeah. thanks for admitting that. <laughs> I've only no, done what? it once before, so... What? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Stuart Beckett is from Southampton. A former IT specialist, he has recently taken the plunge to become a professional artist. He wanted to capture a landscape in a state of flux, and so his submission depicts the building site of West Quay Shopping Centre. Why are you on the floor exactly at this point? I am on the floor, not just praying, but no. um, to get some of this um, glazing medium on that I've been putting on which is not drying very quickly. Now, so what does that do? It just adds a bit of texture on top of the acrylic that I've already put on okay, there. OK, so it's going to lift it up. Yes. This looks quite a long way away from drying, this, the, the lumpy stuff. There isn't some method you could use of waving it about, blowing. <laughs> In a dryer, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Have you got a lot of hair? Do you want to give it a go? Well, I'll give it a try. If we both get down here well, and I'll start it blowing, blow. it'll look even more religious. <laughs> To start a painting is really don't think that much. Focus on the lines you're making. Gradually, when the form is com becoming something, you need to put them in order. Then you need to be more careful with the arrangement. Mm -hmm. Originally from Taiwan, professional artist Meng Ju Shi is studying for a PhD at the Slade School of Fine Art. Her submission work is at the Conservatory at the Barbican Centre in the heart of London. Someone told me you've made a mistake somewhere here. Yes, can you tell where I made the mistake? Well, it's very hard to tell because so much of it is so expressionistic, but when I look at the range of palette tones, I'm just wondering whether it might be that little area there. That's the mistake I made, the blue mark. I mean, lots of artists like these, what they call happy accidents in mm. their work, because they need something to push and pull against mm. while they're sort of playing with the tones or yes. playing with the form or whatever. I mean, do you welcome those accidents in your work? I, yeah, absolutely. The, that kind of happy accident is more than welcome, but this is not really a happy accident yet. I will make it happier <laughs> later if I can. So, Ty, uh, when I look at this composition, uh, it seems to have every cliché you could ever want about the English countryside. It's impossibly perfect. It is not only difficult in its composition, but if you squint, all the colours and tones are all the same. I know what you mean, yeah. The only variation we have is the sky and then if you actually look at the colors as well that the red brick in and in the tiles and the building is also in the roots of the ferns by the so there's actually very <laughs> little contrast for our artists to work with and their challenge presumably is to try and give us the unexpected yes. amidst all this predictability yeah and and i think some have started quite boldly by saying i hate green <laughs> and so they've already sort of, you know... They're on the wrong show, <laughs> let's face it. <laughs> Even where they would have a bit of light relief in the pond. You know we like reflections. Oh, I love reflections. It's got lily pads all over it, yeah. so it doesn't even reflect. No, it's still, I, that was... <laughs> when I looked at that, the first thing I thought... Well, yeah. You can find some reflections, yeah. but they're so masked by the lily pads. But, you know, none of the artists have complained. They've all said this is absolutely stunning. So... They're connecting with it and they want to tackle it, so we haven't pushed it too far.
One of the great things about creating a piece of art is that you don't always have to use paint. I'm just making some like leaves and uh, plants and stuff that I'll collage onto the bottom. I like the sort of the foreground with the plants, uh, but I think I need to work it up a bit more, add some more in, so it's really like full like it is in reality. At 18, Cecilia Wood is the youngest artist in this year's competition. She competed last year as a wild card and won her heat at Lime Park. She wanted her collage landscape of Butterley Spillway in Marsden to show that even man-made structures can be beautiful. As the days progressed, um, there's more and more, more stuff happening. Yeah, you it's go, like you're moving in. Is this how you usually paint? Is you sort of get yeah. immersed in the atmosphere and the is landscape? This... This was all at home and I packed it all up, brought it all here and slowly spreading out today. So I can see these lovely leaf marks. Have you, it's almost in a funny way somehow you've traced them from the leaf, but have you just copied them? How have you done um, that? I, like, I pressed them in uh, with paint on, but... Oh, you've oh. done a pressing? Yeah, but it wasn't that effective, so I just decided to use some pens. OK, I see. so you're really just experimenting here in yeah. the middle of a, a timed <laughs> competition. Which I, I like, that's the youth, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> and it's exciting for us to see as well. I normally paint architecture, I normally paint urban scenes, very modern, very contemporary buildings with lots of glass, lots of reflections, and I have fun with the reflections. But unfortunately, we don't really have much in the way of reflection there. Cathy Reid is a professional artist who lives in Buckinghamshire. To pursue her dream of becoming an artist, she gave up a career as an occupational therapist. Her love of iconic architecture is captured in her submission watercolour of the Gherkin in London. Will you be doing your white lines? I will be doing my white lines. Now, that's done with masking fluid. It is. Can I make a confession to you? I don't really know what masking... Is it like Tipex? It's basically liquid latex. Is that stuff? Liquid latex? Yes. Yeah. So if I... I mean, I cycle. Would I be... If I was sprayed with that, could I construct an impromptu outfit? <laughs> I suppose you could. <laughs> Let's try it. <laughs> it looks like semi-skimmed. I'll be honest. It, it, it does, and it's best if it's that sort of consistency as well. I'm just finding my little tool and I can show you. So I basically take that in. Yeah. And oh, so it's, it it's not done with a brush, it's done with a, with a, a sharp point. It's called a ruling pen. So what is masking fluid normally used for? Uh, it's normally used for keeping the paper white. That's what, that's what it was... I don't know what it was designed for. or Keeping the, the paper white? What kind of a purpose is that? Well, with watercolour, you're not supposed to use white paint. You're supposed oh, to use what? the white of the paper. Is that right? That's traditional, so if you're a purist... You OK. Paint. But this is basically the secret of your success. Yeah, I think so. Painting for a possible place in the semi-final, the wild cards are trying to catch the eye of the judges with an idea of their own. Some are even trying three. No, are you doing a triptych? Yeah, we're yeah. Gonna, you're blowing my mind. This is too <laughs> exciting. Sixteen-year-old triplets Rebecca, Rachel, and Sarah White are from Surrey. They've been painting individually, but also together yeah. since they were 11 years old. And today, the judges have allowed them to compete as one. This is really quite a challenge. Now, do you confer one with another? Yes. So you, what have you, can, you've decided you're going to do this part? I've done, I've done all the sky. We, we swap round in each painting. I'm a bit of a foliage fan, so I do all the sort of leaves and stuff. Mm. At the moment, I'm just doing the lake, but yeah. we kind of swap over. Do you ever disagree? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> says yes. Oh, now what made you touch her canvas that she's working on? Well, I just you saw what I needed to, to do quickly, so I just... <laughs> We're all enormously impressed. So I can tell you're the shy and retiring type. <laughs> well, I spent about an hour getting myself very angry oh. with that dreadful little painting. Let's have a look at it. Oh, it's quite cute. Yeah, that's the problem with it. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
I just love uh, the wildcard area. They brought everything with them, you know, the kitchen sink, the umbrella, all the paints they could possibly need, multiple canvases, and their partners to bring them cups of tea and coffee and sort of make them feel good about it all. You know, I get always a bit emotional when I... Uh, yeah. Did uh, you cry this time? No, 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 I'm, I'm okay. heartened by heart. It's nearly halfway through the challenge. I'm trying to leave some of this showing through as well because it's a nice texture on the, on, the, um, on the mirror, so I don't want to lose all of that. But equally, I need to get a bit of light in. I can't just do a black painting. <laughs> when you're spending time on a painting, of course, the lights can be changing, especially painting in England. It changes dramatically from minute to minute, hour to hour. So what light do you use, you know? It's time to get into details and to see the painting as a whole, not individual brush marks. I'm trying not to put green on my canvas until I'm very, the very, very end, but we'll see. We'll see how it works out, but certainly not that green. Here at Scotney Castle in Kent, the artists are halfway through the challenge. And during one of the breaks, they're having a little look at each other's work. Oh, wow, you got everything. So I've done, that was the first one. I like it. Yeah. Right down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second one. Yeah, I'll see. Yeah. Did you put it in your luggage when you brought it? When it you it's, came? it's to the measurement of my suitcase. So. <laughs> <laughs> but today, it's the judge's opinion that counts. OK, judges, halfway time, overview. What do you think, Ty? Um, what's interesting is that uh, compositionally, not many have been uh, very um, inventive. I mean, they really have plonked the house right in the middle, or what we're seeing of the ruins right in the middle. I think all of them are sticking to exactly the styles that they know, yeah. and they're very confident. And if you think about Richard, the graphic designer by training, he's got exactly the same approach. He's brought that industrial landscape. Yeah, I mean, Mark is a prime example. You, are you seen his stuff more recently? He's yeah, I spoke of... to Mark very early in the morning. He'd finished his first one. <laughs> um, and he was happy to go on to the second one. And he was going to, at the end of the day, just see what he felt was going to work for us. And Meng Zhu has also stuck very much with her mm. traditional style, yeah. which I think is looking really beautiful and colourful, even though she says there are some accidents in there. I really like Stuart. He arrived with this clunky mirror, although it didn't look like a mirror, yeah, that he painted that. blue. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was just allowing some texture to come through and he's going to peel back certain elements. He's very careful not to make it too cliched. He's been working on it down. We've had some Jackson Pollock with the dripping. But actually what's emerging is a really interesting kind of moody painting. They might be sticking to their style, but they are adapting it and being, making it slightly different. Um, I'm just thinking of Howard. He's a scene painter. I love he's, he's just absolutely covered with paint. Yeah. <laughs> His submission was that beautiful lake. He's had to adapt here. There is certainly a lake, but there's no reflection in it. So who's the head of the race here? I try not to have a favourite at this stage because I want to give them all room to grow and change before we get towards the end of the day. A wide range of tools are being used to create texture in the paintings, including a material usually reserved for wrapping sandwiches. I normally put cling film on because I get lots of interesting textures when I put the cling film on, so it's just part of the process I normally do. It's something I started doing. I was experimenting with texture and I thought I'd try cling film. It's, it's almost like a folded blanket type thing, isn't it? And uh, it, sort of, it just pulls up the colour. Now, this is where, I've, unfortunately, I have to wait for that to dry a bit, because if I go in immediately, if I pull that off, it'll just go flat. The ruin our artists are painting today isn't a result of neglect. It was actually carefully planned. In the early 18th century, the old Scotney Castle was no longer habitable and had reached the end of its useful life. 
So Edward Hussey III built a brand new home, New Scotney Castle. But what to do with the old one? As a keen watercolourist, Edward Hussey III had an idea. The castle was ruined to basically fit in with the picturesque ideal, this romantic sensibility of referring back to a time that's very wild and mystical. The picturesque literally means in the manner of a picture, and it relies on three different characteristics. So it has to be dramatic, it has to have variety, and it has to have rough edges. Deconstructing an unused structure, or in fact, building a ruin, became remarkably popular. But as it turned out, it wasn't just a fashion thing for the Hussey family. The family were quite artistic. We have quite a lot of paintings from different family members in the house. And the family's passion for painting was infectious. Got lots of artwork um, of friends who came to stay and then left lovely landscapes of Scotney Castle behind for them as presents. The view is so iconic and it also changes and you see something different each time, whether it's the colours or the trees going bare and people come back and just love it. The wildcards have enjoyed the camaraderie of painting together, but now one of them could win a place in the semi-final. All the judges have to do is choose one, but with such a variety of styles, that might not be easy. We mentioned the woman who did that rather nice drawing with graphite as you yeah. approach from the, uh, the pods. I quite like that. I like the watercolour. It's been really strong all day, which is it's almost like a harlequin, slightly mm. cubist. Yeah. He's, and it's quite it's, vertical, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very much of today, but it's quite, it's quite funny. I mean, there's a little duck in it, which mm. I think is great. I'm, I'm rather keen on the bit of sky behind us here. A really big whopper of a painting. Yeah, I know there's not that much of the, um, the landscape itself, but you know, he's been big and bold right from the very start. They're good painters, and that's yeah. what I think uh, painting outside is about. It's sort of letting yeah. it rip a yeah. bit. Excuse me. Hello. Is this your painting? Oh. Woo! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> No, this has never happened before. <laughs> was this your painting? It was my painting. Well, it was accidental, but it was quite a fanfare. It was. And, and quite appropriate because this is the wild card winner for today. You are our wild card winner, yeah. <laughs> is it all right? I'm going to hold on to it just in case. John Newman from the West Midlands will now join a pool of other successful wild cards from across the heats from which one will win a place in the semi-final. Not only do our eight main artists have to create a landscape in four hours, they have to do so in front of spectators, and not all of them are impartial. Have you been and had a look at the painting? Yep, I have. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? You think so? Yeah, I, li I, so. I certainly yeah, like it. It'd be a nightmare if you'd turned up and it was rubbish. <laughs> Occasionally that happens. Yeah, that you bring it. something home and he says, what do you think? And I'm like, yes. Oh, really? In general, fabulous. I love his work. If you see another piece of art that you think is better than Richard's, my advice is just put a bit of gravy on the arm <laughs> of the easel. Just let the dogs go. <laughs> something there, not a lot, unfortunately, this one. It needed to stay on a bit longer so I could actually get start um, creating the effects, but I pulled it up a bit too soon and all the paint's flattened out, but it's, it's, it's happened now, I'll work with it. <laughs> there are just 30 minutes of the challenge left before the judges select one artist to go through to the semi-final. I think I've got most of what I wanted to do done today, so the fact that there's only a little bit of time left, I'm just worried about overworking it now. Um, there's a few things I want to do, but then after that, I'm just going to have to tell myself to leave it alone <laughs> and be brave. Looking, looking good. Not exactly how I want it, but it's not far from what I think it would look like. There's a lot to do. It's quite a complex piece of architecture, so it's mm, quite a lot to do. 
Every painting is a risk. It's working towards something else. It's, it's, it's failing better each time. That's what it is. Nestled among the bucolic landscape of Scotney Castle in Kent, our eight heat artists are in the final moments of their challenge. How do you feel about it? Hmm, just need a little bit of something. Give me five more minutes. <laughs> oh, God. I will... What is it? What can Give it be? Give me five more minutes. Artists, there are five minutes to go. Which are you going to submit, as if we couldn't guess? I think it's going to be this one. Um, but even, though, even so, I still haven't finished because I want to take the tape off. No, that's yeah. the finish. Do you want yeah, to go for it? Can I do that? You do it sort of at an angle. Oh, I see. So it's got to be quite low, or else you pull the paper off. Keep it low. Going all the way. Oh, yes. All the way. How oh, very all satisfying. The way, all the way, all the way. There you go. I now like that, that really, you like that yes, I do. wriggly bit? It frames it. I get the feeling that you're a man who's finished. Yes. Just as well, because the time's near the end. Your time is up. Please put down your brushes and step away from your work. It may be up to the judges to decide who will go through to the semi final, but some keen onlookers have their own opinions. Different style. Oh, messy, messy, abstract. Look. Yeah. This person really has done a lot in four hours. I do like the water. I like the yellows, picking out the yellows at the back. Yeah. So it sort of brings all the picture together, doesn't it? So yeah, she's done really well, I think. Yeah. Very nice. With the artists taking a well-earned break, the judges assess today's work. And to help them decide who will go through to the semi-final, they must first select a short list of three. I really love this one. I think it's a joyful celebration of colour mm. and the foliage um, and a really wonderful impression of the blue sky day. And I know a lot of people will look at it and think it's just a mess of paint and mashed up, but I, I really like that honesty about it. It's sort of like a Willy Wonka, Tim Burton take on the landscape. It's all sort of like the colours turned up, everything's exaggerated. And I do think that she's still got a bit of a way to go in refining some of her ideas, but I love the energy and the imagination. Yeah. Yeah. The worst moment is I made the blue wrong mark. Yeah, wrong, so wrong. You know what we're saying about capturing the mood of the day and the, <laughs> this doesn't, but it's fantastic. It's got great depth and atmosphere. I love the mood. I like the composition and the fact that he's yeah. pushed it up high and you don't see much sky. But I'm really irritated by these gluey, globuly drips that he's put all over. Why would you do that? I like the playfulness and the inventiveness. I like to see an artist who's prepared to take risks. I think the mirror part went not too badly in the end. It was a bit of a gamble, but I think it's paid off. At least I hope it has. <laughs> This one is growing on me, I have to admit, because I thought early on it was a bit drab, but then I realised there are intonations of that lovely light that he had in his submission. You know, it's like a little country you scene. You said but... everything I was going to oh, say. Oh, good. I think that some people might look at this and think it's a little bit chocolate boxy, but I think he's the only one who's really had a relationship with that mm. building and that view, and I think he's done it really well. It is a difficult thing to do it in four hours, so I'm relieved that that's over. <laughs> what
what I really love about this guy is the relationship that he has with the paint and how he likes to feel that the paint's doing its own thing. And he's given this incredible sense of energy right mm. the way through it, which is really effective. I don't feel he was looking and adapting it to mm. what he was looking. So it's almost like he's got an idea of a house and some trees and he's just sort of knocked that up. I like the fact that it's almost as if you're rushing past it in a car mm. or that you get that sense of wind and there is an extraordinary, you know, wind rustling through the trees. It was always going to be three or four paintings at the very least. Uh, the last one was the best choice because the other two I'd picked a view, I picked a composition, which looked good, um, but it was cramped. Yeah. I think that one's a definite fit. So I think all of yeah, us have got... that and that, great. I see the merits in both of those and I'd be very happy with having them in our top three. I think they're very good. But who has made their short list? The first of those artists is Mengju. And the second artist is Stuart Beckett. And the third artist to be shortlisted is Howard Weaver. Commiserations with those of you who didn't make it. Yes, we brilliantly well done. Well done to them. I think I gave it a good shot. As the day progressed, I saw those three and thought they were, they were a strong body of work. Esteemed judges, we have your three choices. Quite a, a bit of variety. Meng Ju, I was surprised that, that she made the, the top mm -hmm. three. She worked from an image which was low in amongst the yellow irises and you went, it looked across the water and there's great space and light and the mark making is interesting. I'm not as convinced of this painting as these guys, but I do see that there's an interesting approach and there's promise, I think. It's not there yet. I completely understand why people might have trouble with it, but I think there's a lot of variety and range in that painting. To be shortlisted is amazing, and, but at the same time, I feel calm. Stuart's really shown us his range today. He's found a fantastic way of bringing this ruin to life in a sort mm. of very atmospheric way. Mm. Yeah, he's a great storyteller, and I think he's happy to adapt his style and his approach and his technique um, in order to conjure a really strong narrative. And in both of those paintings, you know, you can start telling stories. I didn't even think I'd get this far. I didn't even think I'd get entered, so <laughs> I'm top of the world. <laughs> what about Howard? There's an incredible honesty. That building in, in the painting today is so real. It's so true to what we have here. You can almost feel the textures of the bricks. I think that you have sought so much innovation and experimentation yeah. on this show that now he's become a bit of a rebel and a bit, mm. whoa, yeah. oh God, that actually <laughs> looks a bit like the rascal. It's a very classical, traditional composition, but he's inventive in the way he's done it. He hasn't just mm. stuck mm. to this, and he also hasn't gone over the top where he's embellished this. It'd be nice, wouldn't it, for one week, that in my ear I can hear the British public at home standing and applauding that, you put, that this has made the final three. <laughs> With cries of, at last. We've got to keep people on their toes. Well, that's... Yeah, that's, that's what's happening. Menju, Stuart, Howard, this is the moment we really hate because two of you are going to be disappointed and that's terrible, but the judges have made their decision. Yes, the artist they have selected, and I quote, produced a painting that evoked an honest sense of mood and place. And that person is... Howard Weaver. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done, mate. I was very shocked when my name was called out, out of that group, and, and I stood there. It was, yeah, I'm still in shock, actually. <laughs> Howard won today because his painting evoked Scotney so efficiently, and I think it's because of his skill as a scene painter that he understands how little you need to give the viewer to get that across, and he did it beautifully. The quality of their work was was pretty high to me. Uh, to be selected out of that group was uh, it means a lot.